History Camp helps Korean kids find their heritage. Korean volunteers teach students in Indonesia. Korean fried chicken and beer, a hit in German Riverside Festival. A village frozen in time. Promoting Korea with a fusion mass dance. Two brothers dominate the ice rinks of Canada. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Chong se -min. Korea is entering the cool season of autumn now. By November, we will be in early winter. And some people say that they feel like they're in Siberia whenever it's cold. And a recent video showing just how cold Siberia is has made its rounds online. The video features frozen waves on Lake Baikal, and reportedly, the entire lake freezes in late December. The edges freeze in layers over time, creating a mystical image of frozen waves. We can only guess what is in store for this coming winter, and it might still be a bit early to imagine winter, but some of you probably already have plans for white winter. On that note, let's turn to our first story today. Over in New Jersey in the United States, a history camp for Korean students helped generate interest in Korean history through fun games and experiences. Let's find out more. At the signal, students rush for cards on the ground. They match the cards to form phrases related to Korean cultural heritage. Over here, students learn about ondor, the Korean traditional heating method for houses. <laughs> students play as they learn about Korean history. Arts and crafts 같은 것도 많이 했고 이렇게 연극 같은 것도 많이 해서 되게 이렇게 좋았어요. This is a camp organized by the National Association for Korean Schools Northeast Chapter and its aim is to teach Korean through play. 90 students took part in this year's camp, whose theme focused on the unified Shilla dynasty and the kingdom of Palhae. 정체성을 정확히 알아야 어, 사회에 나가서도 당당하게 어, 생활할 수 있고 또타 민족 문화와도 어, 원활하게 어, 융합할 수 있다고 생각합니다. 어, 제목 자체는 역사 문화 체험이지만 어, 실제로 정말 타임머신 속에 들어가 있는 듯한 그런 느낌. Although the camp faced budget problems, teachers filled in the gap or volunteered. The camp proved to be an opportunity for students of Korean descent to learn about their roots and heritage. Moving on to our next story. Korean university students recently visited the Indonesian city of Bogor and had an unforgettable experience with local elementary school students. Let's take a closer look. The wall is being repainted and covered with balloons and children's favorite animals. The field is also getting a cleanup. Sangat merasa terima kasih, sangat merasa terbantu dengan adanya bantuan dari Korea ini. Sekolah kami menjadi lebih baik, lebih rapi, sehingga anak murid kami menjadi betah berada di sekolah dengan keadaan sekolah yang lebih baik dan lebih lengkap. Some 20 university students recently visited an elementary school located in Bogor, two hours away from the Indonesian capital city of Jakarta by car. They fixed old facilities and presented children with new experiences like playing with clay or tuho. Bantuan ini yang terdapat yang didapat dari mahasiswa Korea, kami uh, masyarakat Cipicung, khususnya dan Cipicung 03. Sangat berterima kasih dan merasa senang. Mudah-mudahan dengan adanya bantuan ini. There may have been linguistic barriers, but everyone actively took part and sang along. The volunteers in return received warm affection from the children. Yeah. 
The volunteers were there for only nine days, but they left with greater things in their hearts. Our next story takes us to Germany. In Korea, during the summer, it is easy to spot groups of people enjoying fried chicken and beer by the riverside. And apparently, this is becoming popular over in Germany, arguably the world's capital for beer. Let's find out more. The riverside here is filled with people beating away the late summer heat. Along with refreshing beer, you cannot forget fried chicken. The fried chicken and beer combo, known as chimek in Korea, has won over even Germans. A Korean pavilion was featured at the Frankfurt Riverside Festival this year, one of Europe's largest cultural festivals. Some 30,000 visitors stopped by as word spread about Chimek. Wir freuen uns sehr, dass Korea uns seit Jahren jetzt an ihrer Esskultur, an ihrer musikalischen Kultur teilhaben lässt und die Menschen kommen sehr gerne hier hin und essen am koreanischen Stand. The pavilion also showcased a Hegem performance and allowed visitors to make traditional masks. Korean expatriates based in Frankfurt plan to continue promoting Korea after the end of the festival. Our next story takes us to France. When the people of France wish to go back in time, they seek out a certain town. The town is Provence, and it is seemingly frozen in the Middle Ages. Let's take a closer look. Two knights suited in armor engage each other in combat. Their awkwardness triggers laughter among the spectators. Then appear the Crusaders, who fought in a series of wars from the 11th to the end of the 13th century. This is a French town of Provence, a place seemingly frozen in time in the Middle Ages. Pour euh, bah, célébrer le temps euh, du Moyen Âge euh, à Provins avec les remparts, et toutes sortes d'animations. Provins voilà. is located 80 kilometers southeast of Paris. It was a commercial hub in the 11th century, connecting northern Europe with the Mediterranean Sea. From the city wall to the houses of the aristocrats, the town maintained its scenery from the Middle Ages and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Le monde médiéval est quelque chose que j'aime beaucoup, donc euh, c'est l'occasion de sortir un petit peu de la routine habituelle, de retrouver des amis, de voir autre chose que, que d'habitude. The residents here have been dressing up as serfs, merchants, or aristocrats and holding festivals every year for the past 30 years. Tourists, escaping from the hustle and bustle of daily life, feel like they are going back in time. The town, with its population of 13,000, attracts more than 1 million tourists every year. Nous aimons les costumes, c'est moi qui les fais. Et c'est la joie de participer, d'être euh, avec plein de monde et de, de, dans le temps de voyager. Voilà. La participation et l'engagement des habitants de Provins. Si nous n'avions pas les bénévoles, les habitants de Provins qui se, qui se costument, qui participent à à organiser toute la fête, ça ne serait pas possible. Ça n'est possible que parce que nous avons un grand réseau de bénévoles. The maze-like narrow corridors may not be very convenient to pass through, but they hold centuries of history. The residents are voluntarily and proactively guarding the town's history and traditions. Moving on to our next story, there is a Korean high school student in New Zealand who is making his own dance style by fusing taichum or Korean traditional mask dance with hip hop. His dream is to spread Korea through his dance. Let's find out more. 
A small performance takes place at this picturesque location in Christchurch, New Zealand. It fuses hip hop with taichung, or Korean traditional mask dance. Smooth, like everything was, it like tells a story about, about <laughs> Korean traditional culture and stuff, yeah. The performer behind the mask is 16-year-old Bin Hyomin. Hyomin is known at his school for his dance skills. He began learning dance at the age of five from his mother, a dance instructor, and has performed on stages of all sizes, big and small. My story to other people can give me a chance. I can do my performance. 그 그거를 보는 사람들은 더 나한테 감동을 받기 때문에 나이가 어리든 많든 그걸 상관 안 하고. This is a dance studio he frequents whenever he has time. A serious expression masks his face as he dances along with his friends. His dance incorporates K-pop, hip-hop, taichung, and other genres. Um, yeah, I think a lot of dancers just stick to one style or um, one kind of thing that they're really good at, but because he can um, kind of branch out and try those different, tr more traditional dances and um, things that are appropriate and special to his culture. 여기서 태어났지만 그래도 저는 한국 사람이고 그리고 우선 우리 엄마 아빠가 이제 그런 한국 문화를 사랑하기 때문에. 이렇게 탈춤을 이렇게 한국 문화를 이렇게 꼭 보여주고 싶은 사람도 있구나라는 거를 사람들 다르고 싶어. Ben is working toward a new goal these days. He wants to directly plan a K-pop or Korean cultural performance. He's already successfully directed a K-pop festival organized by the Korean Association at the end of last year. 분명은 안 해도 내가 그 사람들한테 인정을 받고 그 사람이 나 나를 보고 아 이, 이런 사람도 있구나 라면 저는 그것만으로도 제 꿈은 이루어졌어요. Ben wants to remain a dancer for the rest of his life. He plans to spread Korean culture in New Zealand through his dance. It's time for our last story of the day. There are two Korean brothers who are making names for themselves in Canada, a country where ice hockey is a national pastime. Let's take a closer look. The atmosphere here is tense for a practice session. Two players glide over the ice and make a goal in one swift move. They are Lee chong and Lee chong min two brothers who came to Canada to practice ice hockey. They're both outstanding, outstanding uh, citizens. They, uh, they hold high character. Um, I think as a coaching staff, you want to work with players that, that want to learn the game and grow as, uh, you know, as individuals on the ice and off the ice. Both of them do offer a, a real unique uh, high skill set. Chongyeon, the older brother, came to Canada a year ago, and Chongmin a year before that. They will both make an appearance in the top junior league for this season, becoming the first ever Korean players. Twenty-year-old Chongyeon has already played in three World Junior Ice Hockey Championships, and his 18-year-old brother became the first non-Canadian player to have the highest tally of goals in the league. Great players. We're, we're excited to have them as a group, and um, played with uh, Chongmin before in the past, and uh, quite a bit with Chongyeon last year. So uh, we're excited to have them up in Prince George. The brothers check each other's strengths and weaknesses and make the best partners for each other. They also enjoy playing basketball because they believe that in order to enjoy hockey, they need a different hobby. 
Living abroad can get lonely, but the two have each other to lean on. There is a great future in store for the brothers who hope not only to excel in hockey, but also inspire younger players in Korea. I hope you enjoyed today's stories and going global. The New York Public Library in Manhattan has a unique roller coaster, one that is not for people. Instead, it's for books. The roller coaster is part of a new book transport system, and there are about 290 meters of rails laid down within the library. Books are transported from the storage facility in the basement to the reading room on the eighth floor. With such a system, going to the library in itself could be a fun experience. Now, Going Global will be back next week with more exciting and interesting stories from all around the world. Thank you for watching.